Greetings Internet! We have just returned from UK Games Expo in Birmingham, England, which is the UK's biggest tabletop games event and possibly one of the largest in the world. So let us give you 5 minutes of things that made the greatest impression. In our annual explanation video, we always stress how big this show is and how it keeps growing with more exhibitors and events than ever before. With two massive trade halls, an event hall, plus seminar rooms, and all the meeting rooms at the Hilton filled up with RPGs. And as an official member of the press, we got more spam than we ever have, and the media preview on Thursday evening was the biggest we have ever seen it, despite there being a lot of tables mostly empty for some reason. There are a staggering amount of games being released every year, most of which are high quality with super production values. Even the amateur designers in the playtest zone had really impressive looking prototypes. Lorcana, the star of last year's show, was back with a bigger booth than ever, and this year they were selling direct to the public, because who needs brick and mortar stores? They did have a new artist who only appeared briefly, and they brought promo cards, but rationed them to one per person and marked your badge when you either got a demo or made a purchase. Unlike Asmodee, who let you queue up for a Star Wars Unlimited demo as many times as you like, and didn't make you pay anything so you could come away with an infinite collection of Grogu's. Speaking of Asmodee, they've really been pulling out all the stops in recent years and had the largest presence of any company at the show. There were huge gaming areas, a dedicated Star Wars zone where you could try the new Mandalorian game, and a preview area where they had unreleased games to demo. When we went on Friday, we were told everything was fully booked and you couldn't take any photos at all, which is kind of a downer if you work in a visual medium. Because there were unreleased prototype copies there, it does make sense that they wouldn't want images that don't reflect the final game being shown off. But on Saturday, we spoke to someone else who said most of the games you can just turn up and drop in and you can snap away to your heart's content. They were selling direct to the public again, cause screw those brick and mortar stores, right? But it was mostly accessories with only a few games on offer. Asmodee also had a competition where you got to collect stamps on a card for each game you played. Which is great if you know you need to be collecting stamps and they don't run out of cards to give out. Although at least Asmodee turned up! There was no Games Workshop this year, which is a shame as they did a great job in 2023 but you could find lots of their stuff in the Bring and Buy. Isn't that the same sealed copy of Space Hulk from last year? If you wanted a long-standing miniatures game, Battletech had you covered, as Catalyst Games came across the pond. And you couldn't miss them as they brought their massive Gen Con banners with them. Speaking of first-timers, those legendary laser cutters by the same token were there, selling their amazing component upgrades and fantasy miniatures, including some show-exclusive designs. And when they ran out of stock, they sent people back to the workshop to work through the night to ensure they were restocked by the morning. Now that's how to run a business. Another newbie at their first ever show was Graven Guild with their Hexton Hills range of 3D printable campaign tiles, which looked amazing. But don't have a heart attack, they do come unpainted. Mega Games have become a real staple at the show, but sadly this year these were in the main tournament hall. Conducting delicate political negotiations is even more challenging when you have a few hundred other gamers battling in the background. Although this year was mostly about dinosaurs. On to the important stuff. There were no official card game events as these are reserved for Gen Con. Allegedly there were some fan events but we couldn't find them and no one posted any pictures afterwards sadly. Arkham Horror the board game was being demoed in the main Asmodee area, but again no card game, and no new Unfathomable expansion. Aconite Books didn't have their own stand, but were incorporated into the Asmodee setup. They had the Arkham Horror poster book on display, which comes out in July. The paper for this is super high quality, which was a great surprise, meaning that you might be able to display them without the need for an expensive frame. They were also offering discounts, particularly on the paperback, so this was a great time to start reading. Especially as they had the first Cthulhu by Gaslight novel there. Plus, they had the cover art for the new Arkham Horror comic from Dark Horse. But watch this! The new Arkham Horror role-playing game Starter Adventure was in the preview area. You did have to book in the morning, but we didn't have any trouble getting a place. This wasn't a finished version, everything was laser printed pages and they were using coin capsules to house all the player and NPC markers. We should probably make a separate video about this, but it is definitely a beginner product designed to bridge the gap between board games and role playing. If you know how to play the board game, you literally know how to play this. 
Every character has a dice pool and you just need to roll equal or above your skill to succeed. And you play the characters you are already familiar with. So guess who our first pick was? We have been L5R fans since before we knew Arkham Horror existed, but we weren't expecting to see any kind of presence at UK Games Expo, not even anything fan organised. But once again, Aconite Books did sterling work offering their novels and the Art of Rokugan book. They also had an early copy of the L5R poster book, which is due in July. This has 24 pieces of art on premium paper as detachable prints measuring 40cm by 28cm, or 16 inches by 11 inches. From the back you can see they have all 7 clan champions plus Tutori, as well as all the maps from the FFG role playing game, an overall map of Rokugan and individual maps of the clan lands including the Unicorn and Scorpion whose source books haven't been released yet. Finally there are a couple of the novel covers to fill in the rest of the slots. Even more of a surprise was the forthcoming board game, River of Gold. A demo version of this appeared at Gen Con last year, but things have been pretty silent since then. It is a 2-4 player Euro game where you play a clan merchant sailing your ships down the River of Gold, collecting goods to fulfil merchant orders, and building properties along the way. But there isn't a samurai in sight. Apart from the stunning board with its amazing gold foiling, everything else was just prototype components, as you can see by the stickers on the dice here. But wait! This fellow turned up midway through with an actual copy of the game, so we were able to get to play with the real components and the mini expansion. So look for much more detail in a dedicated video soon. Everyone who we played with had a great time and spoke very highly of the game. If you are an L5R fan, you need to think of this as a gateway game to covertly introduce your friends who have never heard of the setting to the wonders of Rokugan. So much more! Food trucks, bring and buy, free battle mats, mystery boxes, autographs, and you could play the EVE board game that just finished its Kickstarter. And holy shark repellent Batman, there were even brand new copies of the legendary Rococo Deluxe Edition. So that explains where all our money went. We love UK Games Expo and have been attending pretty much since day one, only missing out during the pandemic. We recommend it to families and solo gamers as either a full three day event or just a day trip. Although if you can only do one day make it Friday or Sunday as Saturday is super crowded. Let us know in the comments below what you saw or what you would like to have seen if you couldn't make it.